What sort of human stories are going on as a civilization collapses? A bombing raid destroys a person's city, or a pandemic begins to unravel the bonds holding a society together? Seeing things through that lens engages different parts of the brain, including emotions, and can often have an impact that the data, graphs, and research studies don't. Think of it as another tile in a vast mosaic, as many disciplines try to restore an image of the past. Do tough times make tougher people? Does how we raise our children have an impact on society at large? Can we handle the power of our weapons without destroying ourselves? Can human capabilities, knowledge, and technology regress? There's a very Twilight Zone sort of element to such ideas, with subtle, and sometimes not so subtle, overtones that seem to speak to our present times. They are ideas that cross the boundaries of modern academic disciplines and tread into territory usually occupied by drama, literature, and the arts. But even without agreed-upon answers, such questions are both fascinating and potentially valuable. Many of them are the types of proverbial deep questions that have always been at the heart of philosophical works. Simply thinking about them more often may have value. Others may offer some practical usefulness, reminding us all, for example, of how many times similar occurrences have taken place in the past may help add a layer of believability to many future possible occurrences that seem more like far-fetched movie plots right now. A history professor once told me that there are two ways we can learn. You can put your hand on the hot stove, or you can hear tales of people who already did that and how it turned out for them. Hardcore history fans have long been asking about a book. I had so much existent material, research, and ideas in the archives that it just seemed natural to use them as a nucleus for such a work. Going back and sorting through it became something of a personal Rorschach test. When one considers all the reading and research that goes into these shows, it's imperative that the subject be of great interest to me. If a person's bookshelf is a window into their interests, apparently mine lean toward the apocalyptic although it was a bit surprising just how often the shows eventually factored down to a related version of the same idea, the end of civilization in one form or another, and not just how we humans might react or respond to that based on past experience, but what kind of people these experiences might make us. Can you blame me? The rise and fall of empires, the wars, the catastrophes, the high-stakes situations, the big stories are intense and dramatic by their very nature. My background is in journalism, and while a true professional should be able to get just as excited covering a dog show as a war, neither I nor most of my colleagues could do this. Judging from the ratings bumps that occur in news with huge events, it seems many people outside of journalism feel the same way about the big stories. History, like news, has its big stories, and sometimes, if it bleeds, it leads is a phrase that applies to both. The combination of material that is entertaining, as well as potentially philosophical, educational, and practical, is an age-old winning formula. Historians and storytellers from Homer and Herodotus to Edward Gibbon and Will Durant recognized that long before Ajax and Achilles were spearing their way dramatically and bloodily through the Iliad while making history. There's a reason a guy like Shakespeare mined the past so often for his material. But it isn't just about diversion or amusement. One is often moved to a form of historical empathy and personal reflection. These events happen to real flesh-and-blood human beings, who were often relentlessly trapped in the gears of history. It's hard not to wonder how we would cope if we found ourselves in similar situations. One of the things that I kept noticing when burrowing into the archives was a recurring, unanswerable, either-or historical question. Will things keep happening as they always have, or won't they? It's an unbelievably intense and scary question in some circumstances. Some of those types of case studies, if you will, are discussed in this book. Will we ever again have the type of pandemics that rapidly kill large percentages of the population? This was a feature of normal human existence until relatively recently, but seems almost like science fiction to imagine today. There have always been large...